Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18 beta 6 to developers and iOS 18 public beta 4 is out now as well. These particular updates bring changes and refinements, and this one came in at 906 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro. This was released alongside many other updates with iPadOS 18 Beta 6, watchOS, macOS, tvOS, and other updates, along with iOS 18.1 Beta 2 with iPad and macOS updates there as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 22A5338B. We're getting very close to the final version. We might just have another beta or two before the RC at this point. Now this update does include a modem update within it. So if you're updating from beta five to beta six, you'll go from 2.16.02 on the 15 models up to 2.16.06. As far as new features, well, there's good news for those that have been updating is if we go to software update, you can now upgrade directly to iOS 18.1 beta two. If you actually have an iPhone 15 pro or 15 pro max with beta five, you couldn't actually update directly to 18.1 beta one for some reason. So they've now fixed that. In the control center, there's been some updates in this beta. So if we go into the control center, press and hold, and then go to add a control. You may have already seen one there at the top, but if we scroll down, you'll see that we have a new capture section. If we take a look at the previous beta, you'll see that we have camera. Now we have capture with camera scan code and magnifier. And these are also found elsewhere throughout this menu. If we scroll down to connectivity, we also have a Bluetooth option. And as I showed in the 18.1 video, this actually toggles it on and off, but does not turn it off completely. So just like we had the toggle before that was easy to reach. If we turn this on, not this one. If we turn this one off and we go to settings, if we go back to Bluetooth, you'll see that it's still on. If we go back to the toggle here turn and turn this one back on, you'll see that it doesn't affect it in any way. So that's something that may disappoint some people, but at least they've added it to the actual control center and made it much easier to go into instead of having to go into this multi-layer menu. Now, if we customize the lock screen, we now have that same section for capture with the additional updates. And then if we scroll down to connectivity, we don't have any change here as far as the lock screen icons go. Maybe they'll bring Bluetooth in the future, but at this point they haven't brought that. All of the other icons have been updated since beta five. So they updated a lot of those from beta four to beta five, but there's not a whole lot of changes this time around with beta six. If we go back to the home screen here and scroll over, you'll see that if you have Microsoft apps, they now are affected by the dark screen icons. So they've updated many of their different applications so that they automatically switch. Apple has built this in. However, things such as Instagram still aren't changing. So maybe Apple has more work to do there. Also something that's been updated has to do with the overall tinting of different icons or widgets. This is something I don't think that is necessarily very good, but some of these tints look pretty poor. They're hard to see as far as contrast. It just depends what you use, but they have actually updated it a little bit as far as the widgets go. They've also changed it so that if maybe you change your wallpaper in the background, so if we press and hold here and maybe we'll switch over to this one from a previous video, you'll see it actually retains what was tinted. If we go to the next one here, maybe we'll go to this one, go home. You'll see that it retains the tint setting that I had set before. So that's something that they've updated with beta six or public beta four. There's also an update in music. The first time you go into it, you'll get a new splash screen that looks like this. And the splash screen actually says browse is now called new and share play on more devices. So if we go back into music, you'll see that browse now says new. They haven't updated this in podcasts just yet, but if we go into podcasts, you'll see it still says browse. I would expect that change to be rolled out with future betas. Also, if we go back into here, there doesn't seem to be many other updates here, just mostly that icon change and maybe some things with share play. If you want to share play to more devices, there's also a new splash screen. The first time you go into photos and it says there's an all new design since they removed the carousel with the previous beta, there's new collections and it's fully customizable. If we scroll down, you can see that the actual albums look dramatically different here. They look completely different than they did before in the previous beta. So if we go to photos here and we go down to albums, you'll see they look completely different this time around. So they've updated some of the design here and they'll probably continue to do this in the future. If we go into settings, go to general and then scroll down, you'll see we have a new icon for autofill and passwords. It looks a little bit different. It's not a huge change, but you can see it there. 
They've just updated it a little bit and they've also updated this in security where they've removed an option. So if we go down, let's go back here. We'll go down to privacy and security under privacy and security. If we scroll down, there's no longer stolen device protection for some people here. Some people are seeing it. Some people are not. I actually still have it, but some people have said it's disappeared. Some of those people were from the UK, maybe some in Europe as well. So I'd love to hear from you if you actually see this and if it's disappeared, it's still also in the password section, but if it's not here, some people are not seeing it there under face ID and passcode either within settings. If you're using the motion update. So if you're using motion for vehicle cues, they've updated this here so that it actually shows a new little icon here when it's activated. So you can see what that looks like when it activates. It shows a different icon you can see there. So that's a slight change, not really anything huge, but something that's different. As far as other things, well, if we go into photos, I captured some other splash screens as well. The first time you go into notes, you'll get a new splash screen. Also, when you go into home, some people are seeing one when you go into calculator. So we have that updated calculator. Let's see if I have it here. We'll go in. And under calculator, I'm not seeing it here, but some people are seeing a new splash screen there. Also podcasts. We didn't see one there and other people are seeing it under the translate app as well. So just some more guidance. You can see here where it says Hindi translation, your favorite on all your devices and transliteration. So they've updated that and we'll continue to see these just as we get closer to a final release. As far as notable bug fixes this time around, well, many people were being bothered by permissions popping up every time you opened an app. This seems to be fixed in this update. However, there are still some bugs that remain. As far as the standby bug, let's take a look at that since I haven't checked it on this device yet, but last I knew it worked well. 17.6.1 fixed it for a lot of people, but not for everyone. So if we have it on a dock sideways or plugged in and, and it's in landscape, once it's in standby, if we press and hold, it will unlock and then we can edit the actual color to whatever we want, go back in and it should work. So. Some people were saying this hasn't worked for them, even in 17.6.1, but it seems to be much better for me in this update. And I think most people have seen this been resolved, but let me know if it's fixed for you. The wallpaper dimming bug seems to be much better in beta six, as you can see here. So if I scroll up, you'll see, it doesn't seem to desaturate like you would expect. It looks like maybe they finally fixed it and it usually shows in pretty vibrant wallpaper. Also the iPhone 15 wallpaper is still missing. So if we go to add wallpaper here, and if we scroll down, there's no wallpaper here for the iPhone 15 series models, 15 pro models specifically. So maybe they'll fix this pretty soon. It's a known bug. And I have seen feedback from someone where Apple's acknowledged that it's a known bug as well. So I would expect them to fix that fairly soon. If we take a look at the release notes in the feedback app, give it a second to load. And within the notes, they've resolved a lot of different issues. The one thing I mentioned before, where you can update to iOS 18.1 directly from this device, they've resolved issues in the control center and they continue to refine a lot of different things. If you're having problems with something in iOS 18 beta six or public beta four, be sure to check the notes first before you actually report it in feedback, because if it's a known issue, they're already working on it. If it isn't be sure to report it here, but you'll see this is just pages and pages of resolved issues and some known bugs as well. So even with Swift charts, there's new features, resolved issues for Swift and much more. As far as overall performance, well, it seems to be very smooth so far, just using it for the past hour or two at this point, ProMotion looks very fast, even on iOS 18.1, which seems to be largely based on this version, seems to be super smooth and fast overall. When it comes to the heat of the device, well, it's going to be a little bit warm, at least for a day or two. And that's typical when you actually install a new update as it's processing a lot in the background. So don't be surprised if it gets a little bit warmer. If you have worse battery life, it usually improves after a couple days. And we'll talk more about that on the weekend with the follow-up video. If we go into our battery settings here, go to battery health, you'll see that I'm at 100% with only 19 cycles. That's because this is not my main phone. But if we go back here, go to the last 10 days, you'll see just today, as this has been running, I've had one hour and 34 minutes of screen active time, 30 minutes of screen idle time, and it was charged to 41% two minutes ago when I showed you this on standby. In general, it seems like this beta could be a little bit better, but that's not the focus of an iOS 18 beta, usually until the very last few betas, but hopefully it gets much better as beta five was not great for me. It was getting me maybe a few hours and then I'd have to charge it before the end of the night so I could get through the rest of the day.
As far as if you should install iOS 18 beta six or public beta four, if you haven't tried a beta before and you want to try it, it's probably pretty safe. But at this point I would make sure that if it's your main device, you have a backup and you have a computer if you want to downgrade. Otherwise you'd actually have to bring it to Apple to do that. If you're concerned about bugs and issues, well, then I'd probably wait until the final release. As far as when to expect iOS 18 beta seven or public beta five. Well, if we go into the calendar here. At this point, it seems like it's releasing on a weekly basis. We could have one more beta and then a release candidate, or we could have two more betas. We just don't know Apple's schedule at this point and how refined this is. But next Monday, I would expect maybe beta seven and public beta five. And then maybe on the 26th, we'll either have beta eight or possibly we'll have the RC or release candidate. Then maybe we'll have Apple invites to the iPhone 16 event toward the end of August with the event taking place usually in the second week of September. And that's typically when we'll see the release of iOS 16 somewhere in the second or third weeks. So we don't know exactly just yet, but as we get closer to the end of August, we'll know more information. As far as iOS 18.1 beta three, that could be either on every other week or probably next Monday as well. Apple's releasing them all at the same time. iOS 17.7 could also release sometime in September, usually around the launch of iOS 18. That's what Apple did last year with iOS 16.7. When it comes to benchmarks, I ran that on this device and I scored 2,839 for single core, 6,994 for multi-core. It's not terribly great compared to the previous one, but it's about the same. It's within its margin of error. It's basically performing the same as the previous one. However, I would expect this to actually increase as time goes on as things get processed in the background. So definitely looks like it could be a better beta overall. So that's everything with iOS 18 beta six or public beta four. And of course, as I find more details, I'll be sure to cover additional features and changes in the weekend follow-up video, typically on Saturday, where we go over battery life and more as it takes some time to determine that. If you found any other additional features I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>